Hello friends, welcome back to the Pottery Plus Studio. I'm just working with some iron wash today and I thought this might be a good thing to show you what I'm doing and how you can use iron wash to enhance texture. It's a really great product to use for um, getting, it'll kind of, uh, it settles into the recessed areas of your textures and then when you wipe it off, it kind of creates more of a brighter surface where it's raised and it gets wiped off with a sponge. And so what's awesome about it is it will like really give a lot of added contrast to um, any areas of texture that you might have on your piece. So I'm working on a planter project for my best friend. And um, I kind of experimented with these mushroom stamps on a mug and how they were gonna turn out because what I want is a white surface and then I want to make the mushrooms and the stars kind of colorful. So what I did on the first time that I used these stamps was I made this mug and um, I just painted like some colorful glazes onto those stamp uh, mushroom stamps. And I feel like they just didn't get quite enough definition. So this time I'm gonna do the same process again only first I'm gonna lay down some iron wash over those mushrooms. So hopefully it'll just add a little bit of like depth underneath and then I can do the same white glaze and colorful glaze uh, in the details. And I'm just hoping that it will give a little bit, like I said, peeking out from underneath where the edges of the mushrooms are to show like, oh, just give them a little more, you know, just bring them to life a little more. Like here, the colors are just so bright. It kind of just, those are the only shapes that are showing is where I painted on those colors. So I'm really trying to get, like enhance the silhouette of the mushroom itself so you can tell what it is a little bit better. Um, this project also has a mouse on it. <laughs> Me and my best friend have a thing for, for woodland creatures. Um, but you can see here, here's a mushroom that I've already done this on and it, it, Again, it just really enhances the texture. So let me show you how I did that. I'm just gonna use an iron wash and I made my iron wash myself. It's just red iron oxide and water. This is an eight ounce jar that I have here and I filled this jar almost to the top and then I put in about two to three tablespoons. And friends, this is my red iron oxide. I buy it in like a dry format. Um, it is an ingredient in a lot of clays and glazes, so red iron oxide is a really versatile thing to have, but yeah, I just buy it dry and I mix it up myself. It's really low maintenance. It doesn't have to be um, strained much or, any, or, I mean, I don't strain mine at all as long as the um, dry product seems pretty smooth. So yeah, it's like just a nice easy little wash you can make. Okay, let me show you how I'm gonna apply it. So, I kind of almost tap it on because I want it to be kind of fluid enough to like almost go into those recessed areas I was talking about like on its own. Like I try to keep it as low maintenance as possible what I'm doing with the brush. So I'm just kind of almost like tapping it in using it pretty liberally. I'm keeping it pretty liquid here for this application. And I'm kind of having to paint those edges in just a little bit. And folks, this brush that I'm using is not the ideal brush for this. But I just had like an hour to come in here and sit down and work. And so I grabbed what I, what I had handy and we're making it work. But yeah, a smaller rounder brush, not a flat brush would be better for this. Um. The iron does settle quite quickly, so I like to keep a plastic spoon around and uh, just give it a stir every now and again. Or you can just do it with your brush, but when you have kind of a full container like this, your brush starts to get messy. And one thing about iron oxide is once it starts to get in places it doesn't belong, it can be sort of hard to control. So like if you get it on your fingers um, and you start kind of dabbing it around the pot, it's like... You can wipe it off to a certain extent, but I mean, it, it does have like a stain-ish type of quality to it. So um, yeah, just beware. You wanna kinda keep it neat and tidy when you're working with iron. Okay, finishing up the painting portion now. Almost there. 
don't let me mess it up on this last and final detail. <laughs> this isn't like the ideal angle to be doing this at either, you guys. It's much easier when you're facing it, but this is so cool. It's turning out so great. I just wanted to show you. Okay. So as you can see, you don't need to really be precise or anything about that part. Just kind of get it on there. And next I'm going to use a little like quarter piece of a sponge. I like to get new sponges every now and again and cut them into little wedges like this because these kind of like corners that it creates are good for projects like this because you have a small little surface area that you can go in and wipe with. So now I'm just gonna wipe it back and it's gonna look like this. And you can see that contrast starting to happen. Oops, be careful <laughs> that I was talking about earlier. And friends, I'm not gonna do all of this because I do need to have this turned towards myself to really do the best possible job that I can do for my, for my bestie. See, that'll get, that'll have to be wiped off and it's okay because I'm actually using an opaque white glaze over this. So really, this is just going to provide just a shadow. Um, but hopefully it's enough to kind of at least cause little mistakes like that to blend. But yeah, anyway, this is the process. And it's something that just really enhances textures so nicely. And as you can see, it's pretty easy to do. Um, it, it does take some finesse, but... Once you have that, you can kind of take it and run with it, okay? You can do that on any clay surface that you want. Now, it won't really show up much on dark clay, but otherwise, yeah, have fun with it. Do what you want with it. I'll show you the finished one again so you can see. It'll look like that when it dries, and um, yeah, I just think it gives a really nice effect, and like I said earlier, Red Iron's just a really lovely, versatile product to be familiar with. So I hope you found this helpful, and I hope also that you have just a wonderful rest of your day. And um, whatever step you're on in your pottery or your art journey, keep going. Um, there's just no reason not to. Okay, love you. Talk to you soon. Bye.